question. I'd like to start by, again, thanking everyone for attending today um, and your, your intent or your interest in finding and hiring veterans, National Guard and Reservists. I, I personally can't thank you enough, and I'm, I know that they and their families are, are also excited to hear about NTMA's um, employer participation uh, at this webinar, so thank you. So I'm going to jump right in, in today's webinar topics, I'm going to spend most of my time looking at and talking about finding veterans for your jobs. We find that this is the number one question that uh, businesses have is they continuously tell us they cannot find veterans. So I'm going to spend most of my time on that specific item. And then you can see on the agenda there are the other, other topics that will be covered. So um, I'm going to start with uh, Center for America. I've um, been working with Center for America now for several years um, with the President and CEO, Mr. Steve Nolan. And as you can see on the slide, there are a number of free guides uh, and other documents, uh, best practice guides specifically, uh, that has been downloaded over 170,000 times. And these guides, again, for uh, best practices, federal tax benefits, uh, VEVRA, which is the Vietnam Era Veterans Readjustment Assistance Act, and reporting if you have government contracting uh, obligations. Uh, and these are all free to employers. Um, this looks very much like the homepage for Center for America. And these are terrific resources to help you connect with and find veterans, National Guard, and reservists. So I'd like to talk a few seconds here on veterans, National Guard, and Reservists, and, and what's the population and, and what does it mean to you? So there are a million currently veterans looking for full-time jobs. That includes um, both those who are unemployed and those who are underemployed. And there's approximately 200,000 leaving the active duty military service every year. These numbers, the top two numbers, don't even include the National Guard and Reservists who also need meaningful career jobs. And the 1.8 million veterans working um, currently in minimum wage, there was a, an article recently published that was looking at minimum wage, and it talked about how the increase of minimum wage would support veterans as there are 1.8 million, as this um, slide indicates, that are currently being paid minimum wages which if, if you know military um, transitioning service members, guard and, and reservists, what is this is also implying is that they're being paid below their skill level and only being provided, in this case, for this 1.8 million entry level job. American Job Centers, so as I stated, I'm gonna focus on how to find and connect with veterans, National Guard and reservists. American Job Centers, every service member going through transition today uh, is provided a program called the Transition Assistance Program at active duty installations. And they are all recommended to visit their American Job Center for uh, service. And they call it the Gold Star Service, which means that they would be pro provided six months priority service over anyone else looking for assistance from the American Job Center. And so this, this we consider this a win-win when you reach out to these American Job Centers to find veterans, National Guard and Reservists in order to help them connect with your companies so you could discuss with them matching the right people for your, for your job. Transition assistance programs, if you see the top hand part of the slide, the transition assistance program may vary uh, slightly from service to service, uh, but, but there are transition assistance uh, offices at each active duty installation uh, providing assistance to those who are transitioning about starting 180 days prior to transitioning out of, off of active service. And they reach out, as you see on the bottom part of the side, uh, Soldier for Life, transition complex, so if you fill in the branch, meaning the Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, et cetera, and then the state, what you're gonna see is actually a list of local entities that may be in your state or lo are located nearby. And this is just one example of the Soldier for Life at Fort Sill, 
and contact information to give you an idea of how to outreach and connect and network with the transition assistance programs that may be located near you. The Army National Guard uh, currently has 340 to 343,000 service members. What this map shows you are the Armory locations across the United States. We know that there are veterans, National Guard and Reservists in every zip code across the country. And so this is, again, just the Army National Guard, so it doesn't include the Air National Guard, Army Reserve, Air Force Reserve, et cetera. So you can only imagine that this map would continually be filled in, uh, identifying where uh, high populations or uh, units in your local area may be uh, located. We also consider this another win-win if every employer reached out to their local National Guard and Reserve unit to see who is unemployed or underemployed. We know that we are confident that there are service members looking for jobs just like the ones that you're offering in your local community that come with the, with the um, values and commitment uh, to both the service and to their employer, which is uh, very meaningful to you as well. The State National Guard employment teams, there are um, National Guard employment teams in every state. They may vary a little bit in the size or the number of people working these programs uh, within each state. Um, uh, the programs may vary slightly based on the partnerships that they have developed with other local community partners, uh, but what they are committed to is working with um, the Department of Labor, the American Job Centers. They're committed to working with employers in their state that are wanting to hire National Guard members, and they will assist you with developing programs that fit your needs, but also in matching National Guard members for your job vacancies. And so it, it, it's a win-win um, to work with these uh, State National Guard employment teams. And again, they're available to understand your requirements and assist with military resumes, assist with developing programs to attract military candidates to your job. Joining Community Forces, this is a great website uh, to uh, um, reach out directly to the employment teams within your state. This shows you the Ohio website. And um, when you, when you go log into this uh, and you see on the left-hand side where it shows select a topic, it, it comes up every time with family programs. And if you click that down arrow, you can select employment and then you will see the employment team members within the state of Ohio here. Some of them are at a national level uh, and that's the national program director, which you can reach out to as well. Uh, but this is a great way in order to make that connection uh, within your state, within the National Guard headquarters uh, to help you with your employment programs. The other piece um, on the right-hand side, it shows neighboring state events. There may be service members that are located on the um, borders, if you will, of other states that may need to use their programs. So this, this website is, uh, again, titled Joining Community Forces, and it's a group of um, not only the National Guard, but the website is used to connect with nonprofit government agencies, non-government agencies to, to build networks of support for uh, veterans, National Guard reservists and their family members and to include in the area of employment. So Work for Warriors, this is the California National Guard. And when you go into this uh, website, um, presentation later, I highly recommend you listen to the video. This is um, this program specifically for California and many states uh, have well-rounded uh, employment programs that they have been working on for a number of years. In this case, California National Guard has placed over 2,500 um, warriors, uh, as they refer to them, in uh, employment career jobs over the last two years. And programs may vary slightly, again, from state to state, but I highly recommend you listen to the video to get a better idea of what employment programs might look like in the other states as well. 
Corporate America Supports You is a, a partner, a nonprofit partner with Center for America. And they also partner with the National Guard Employment Network, which is that employment teams, the National Guard employment teams within each state. They also partner with active duty uh, employment counselors. And through that network of employment counselors, both on active duty and in the National Guard, uh, and they've recently also expanded to the reserves as well. Uh, they have placed, as you can see in the lower uh, right-hand um, section of, of the slide there, that in 2016, they placed over 7,000 uh, National Guard and veterans uh, in um, career jobs. And the actual annual salary, the average salary that year was about $70,000 uh, for placing those those service members in career jobs. So their uh, record um, speaks for itself, and we consider them a fantastic partner to help find qualified candidates for your job vacancies. America's Jobs for America's Heroes. Right now, we um, it's uh, my understanding that there's approximately 50 NTMA companies that have registered. Uh, unfortunately, not all of them are active. Uh, but I think a piece of that is because of the handoff from HR person to HR person uh, as people turn over, et cetera, that um, we can certainly help assist with anyone interested in joining American Jobs for America's Heroes or um, rejuvenating uh, your, your programs that you've had previously. We have over 2,300 employers who have already joined American Jobs for America's Heroes, and it only takes approximately five minutes to sign up, and then you're automatically linked to Corporate America supports you for that assistance. And I have another slide on, on them as well. Um, but just to focus on this for a second, so American Jobs for America's Heroes, is, as you can see here, you can register again. It only takes about five minutes. There's no confidential information. And what happens basically is once you hit the uh, register button, Corporate America Supports You will contact you within 24 to 48 hours by email to set up your job posting account. Uh, other nonprofits do similar work. So if there's someone else that you're currently working with or you are, are concerned with or would like to know more information about, we could certainly help you with that as well. Since 9-11, there's been about 45,000 new nonprofit organizations that were generated based on individual passions um, and, and other reasons why nonprofits have been, you know, started um, since 9-11. Uh, but there are many out there that support employment outreach and uh, connection of uh, veterans, National Guard, and reservists. And so if you have any questions about any of them, we can certainly have, help you with that as well. So after, um, at, at about 2010, 2011, the Transition Assistance Program was implemented uh, across the Department of Defense. And within that, there was uh, a, the idea that how do we provide skills training for those who are transitioning prior to their actual last day on active duty. So what you see here, are locations where skills bridge advanced training is being provided. The, the programs are provided, again, up to 180 days prior to their transition, and it provides employers and other training in, um, organizations early access to these transitioning service members. And job training on or near installations can also be set up with National Guard and Reserve units as well. For example, the Michigan National Guard has a training program on their installation um, at Camp Grayling. The same type of um, program is set up at Fort Pickett here in Virginia uh, in a number of different um, areas. But to give you an example, over 750 service members participate in welding and pipe fitting skills without any cost to the government or the service member at the locations that you see there. Now, not every location may have pipeline trades. However, 
that's the, the number that has been trained so far at Skills Bridge Advanced Training Programs on active duty installations. And so if that's something that you're interested in, we could certainly help you make those connections. And again, I, I would ask that you consider opportunities in your, in your local communities with the National Guard and Reserve units as well. Another one of our uh, partners is Hiring Our Heroes, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. They launched this nonprofit foundation in March of 2011. Uh, it, can, it consists of a vast network of state and local chambers and strategic partners. They have had more than 1,025 job fairs across the country, and more than 31,000 veterans and spouses have obtained employment through uh, their uh, job fairs. And so this is another opportunity for you to consider partnering with the U.S. Chamber Foundation in order to participate in their job fairs and another opportunity, again, to connect with veterans, National Guard, and reservists. There are other um, organizations, and I, I frankly, I could go on and on about the number of programs uh, that the active duty services um, have established and also the National Guard and Reserve, but I did want to mention some additional candidate referral sources that while you know, they may not be directly involved with job placement, they certainly can help with a, and are valuable um, referral sources of connecting with veterans, National Guard, and reservists. And one other one that I would like to mention that, that uh, I failed to make sure was on the slide is Team Red, White, and Blue. So I would like to comment on a few of them here just for a second. Team Red, White, and Blue, Team Rubicon, Mission Continues, Iraq and Afghanistan, Veterans of America, Student Veterans of America, they have all started or were established after 9-11, and they were all established by young adults, um, uh, mid to late 20s, maybe early 30s, uh, who, after serving their country after 9-11 wanted to make sure that they were continuing to do something that was bigger than themselves. So please don't limit yourself when you're developing your network uh, and considering these sources of, again, great, fantastic referral sources of, of veterans service, serving in or supporting these organizations. They also provide an opportunity for employers to develop um, local community projects alongside with uh, veterans, National Guard reser and reservists as well. So engaging with veteran re referral teams and, and sources, so again, it's so critical that to understand when someone is looking for a job, the number one thing that they're told during their transition assistance program is that you must network, network, network. And the same is true for the employer trying to find veterans. So you need to create these relationships, and they are truly valued partners. And collaborate your expectations to what their role is in helping you to achieve your goals. And then also provide clear and compelling materials to pass along, making sure that not only are you posting jobs, and I'll get into that here in a few minutes, but also talking to um, all partners about what career opportunities are within your industry and within your specific location. And then also follow up regularly to help feedback, to provide helpful feedback on results and uh, meet them in person if possible. That connection, that that face-to-face -face connection is just, you know, it's invaluable. So um, these are just some of the considerations when engaging with your referral teams and the sources that you have to offer for Veterans National Guard and Reservists. Create effective job postings. Describe future growth, as I just stated. Um, so when you're, when you're putting together your job postings, you need to make sure that a service member who's transitioning off active duty or National Guard, again, and reservists, understand what a career also looks like uh, within your industry. Someone coming off of active duty has just left um, an organization that has provided them free housing, uh, medical, life insurance, um, pretty much everything they needed to be successful to include what 
uh, they need to do for promotion to set themselves up for success, to get those key developmental assignments, take the hard jobs, have the Army values, and for the, in, in my case, have being an Army officer, but that um, holds true for all the services. Somebody who's going to show up on time, someone who is a valued member of a team and considered as such. And so with, in your job postings, you have to make sure uh, that you're attracting them to come to your company, and you, and you need to do that through career opportunities and the benefits. So make sure that that's described in your in your posting as well, and focus on required skills and not necessarily on, cred on required credentials. And so what are the skill sets really truly needed for your job postings in order for that individual to be successful in your company and describe how, the ways that your company is military friendly, uh, how you reach out to military um, uh, organizations and how you understand what it is that they are a valued member and how they are a member of your team, uh, and, and in how you're going to retain them in the future and provide that career, um, um, the career opportunities uh, there in their local communities. I think that's the biggest, the biggest, one of the biggest issues uh, that we have seen as well is that, um, but particularly those that are family businesses, and I fully understand it. You know, you're, gonna, you're taking care of your family first, and then the network of those who have been referred. And then, unfortunately, in some cases, you feel like, oh, my goodness, now we have to post jobs and, and how are we going to find um, people, you know, the right person to fill those jobs and with the right values, those that are drug-free. And you can find those, frankly, and those who are transitioning from, the, from uh, active duty in the National Guard and Reservists uh, and directly military transition counselors can help you do that, those matching. Um, and the posting doesn't attract, uh, if it doesn't attract military candidates, talk to those that know those network partners about how you can revise your, your uh, job posting and please revise it because there are so many, as I stated previously, looking for jobs and transitioning off of active duty. Uh, again, they don't include the National Guard and Reserve and that 1.8 currently uh, receiving minimum wage jobs certainly could help with your skill shortages. And the free job posting distribution, um, again, your State American Job Center at this, uh, in your local area, uh, also Workforce Development Centers is basically the same, same type organization. They both work for the State Department of Labor. The National Guard Employment Transition Team, the TAP program offices in your state, uh, joining American Jobs for America's Heroes, again, links you directly with Corporate America, supports you, and then the nonprofit veteran support groups in your area. And again, I can't say it enough, network, network, network. It's so, so important in order to make those connections. So it, then this next section, Interpreting Military Skills and Experience, Part 1, and it says they're focused mostly on learning whether a candidate meets the skill requirements and at what level and create a skills requirements matrix to create um, clarity about the skills you need. So many employers want to review MOS crosswalks or go directly to, you know, what, what military MOSs equal my job postings. And this process, unfortunately, limits the options or opportunities, and it, we find excludes qualified military candidates. And so particularly the first term, service members transitioning without a college degree. So depending on what skill sets you're looking for, we highly recommend that you look at the skills needed to fill your job um, in lieu of doing an MOS crosswalk. And I'll go into this a little bit further on this next slide which shows you an, a sample of skill requirements, in this case for maintenance technician, the entry level, the C level technician, the B, and so forth. And if you can see down on the left-hand side are functional areas, you know, contribute to team success, operate equipment safe, safely, equipment inspections, et cetera. And then if you have a matrix like this and then you fill it with the skills desired, or needed to uh, as an entry level maintenance technician and then a C and B and A, et cetera, and they all build upon themselves, 
that you can use this as a checklist when doing an interview with a military candidate to say, um, what, what of these skills are you fully qualified on? And if you would, identify those. And then it leads to a discussion, if you will, um, in lieu of credentials and certifications about the skill sets that they are qualified to perform. So interpreting those military skills and experience, uh, learning specifically what was included in the initial military occupational training, and then focus on the specifics of on-the-job training, meaning on-the-job training in that military occupational specialty in their military unit, um, and the mentoring after their initial um, basic course and their initial um, military occupational tr training. So everyone goes through, um, as an enlisted service member, goes through basic training and then goes to their military occupational specialty training. And when they leave there, they're then assigned as a team, part of a team, and they continue their on-the-job training. And with that on-the-job training, um, within a short period of time, becomes more and more, uh, they're required to perform more and more leadership um, functions, and they're also trained, um, further trained, on how to perform their military occupational specialty, and many times they're giving, given additional duties that lead to what we call soft skills, and in the industry, in so many industries, is, is actual training provided for someone to become, for example, a program manager of acquiring uh, a new piece of equipment, for example. And so, uh, or man, in, the, in your case, in manufacturing, uh, there's so many additional duties that would be applicable uh, to what you're looking for from military candidates. And so, so performance type questions about the roles and responsibilities should be the focus when interviewing a military candidate so you can identify what it is they are truly qualified to perform and then identify those gaps and, and determine whether you want to develop industry on the job training programs or apprenticeship programs, which I will also discuss here in a second. But one thing that you, you should know is that this process will lead you to understanding how they are able to adapt to changing and demanding environments, and they will always, always, always exceed your expectations. So. I can't say enough about the process of looking at a skills matrix in lieu of doing the MOS crosswalk, and I certainly wouldn't, you know, would like to address any questions that you have at the at the end of the presentation. So again, avoid screening and interview mistakes. Don't prioritize civilian credentials over on-the-job training and experience, and don't prioritize age over the scope of experience. So many young military members, especially those in their initial um, enlistment, who are usually from the age of 18 to 24 years of age, have so much experience, particularly since they have likely deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan and have had so, mu so much um, maturity and responsibility for so many other members of their teams uh, to include safety, uh, the quality of their work, um, inspections, equipment maintenance. Uh, I can't say enough about about service members and what they're capable of doing. So, so make sure that you're focusing on indications of readiness to gain more skills in your interview process, and don't discount what you don't understand. Ask helpers, and what I mean by that is you likely have military members within your uh, company, and if you don't, do not and need uh, assistance with understanding what uh, a resume means when when you are reviewing military candidate resumes. Certainly, you have the ability to reach out to us at Center for America. Corporate America supports you, or one other someone else in your uh, of your network partners. And then, don't expect a polished resume or an interview style from military candidates. First, they don't usually uh, offer any additional information that you're, you're not asking them during the interview. So if you don't ask them a specific question or 
put them at ease right up front so that you can have a really good dialogue about what they are qualified to perform and their actual military experience. You may not find out exactly what you need to know or consider when looking at them filling one of your position vacancies. And so don't keep, can and also the, the other critical piece that we've recognized is don't keep candidates waiting for your feedback. We've seen time and time again where military candidates have applied for jobs and the HR process, frankly, has been so long or taking so long to uh, identify whether they're going to hire someone, they've just moved on. They moved on to other employers who are, are looking to um, um, put their skills to great use. And so I ask that as you look at your military hiring program, that you consider and review your hiring process to make sure that it's timely. Another program I'd like to mention are GI Bill education benefits. It's the GI Bill uh, is, is administered by the Veterans Administration, and they may pay benefits to a veteran for approved training programs. And these programs can include apprenticeships and on-the-job training programs provided by employers or provided by training institutions. There is a position in every state called the State Approving Authority. If you um, Google your state, um, um, State Approving Authority, what you'll find is, um, and there's a website there on the slide, that there is some criteria or some requirements for both an apprenticeship and on-the-job training program that will help you facilitate that process in getting it approved. And they will approve GI Bill benefits for apprenticeship programs provided by, again, um, accredited institutions, so if you partner with a college, uh, a community college, for example, to um, provide your training or provide training that leads to employment within your organization, an individual can use their GI Bill benefits to pay for that training. Veterans are, are Veterans National Guard and Reservists are frankly the only potential employees that come with funding to pay for their own apprenticeship or on-the-job training programs. So I, I believe that this piece is a, the training piece here is a, a missing link, if you will, of filling the skills gap shortages while recognizing military training and experience and the experience that they bring to your organization and filling that training gap once recognized after the interview process that that's needed uh, to fill your jobs with qualified people. And again, those coming with all the values uh, that, that you're looking for as well. And so I know that this was very, very quick. And I know you probably have questions. And we have about 20 minutes um, for your questions. So Christian, I'll turn it back over to you so that we have enough time to address those. All right. Thank you, Marianne. Does anybody have any questions? You want to unmute all your phones? I can go ahead and give access to everyone. Anybody have any questions before we close out the webinar? Okay, well, I don't have any questions, so 
like to just thank everyone for taking the time to join us on today's webinar. Uh, thank you, Mary Ann and Steve Nolan as well. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to go ahead and send me an email, krush at ntma.org. You will be receiving an email from me with the link to the recording as well as a copy of this presentation. Um, so thanks again and have a great afternoon. Thank you.